All right, Mizubi versus the Russian, round 470. Uh, I'm not, yeah. Yeah, it's more like. <laughs> Russian kicking. Yeah, Derek, they were up to almost 5 o'clock this morning. Yeah, where, Derek, weren't you leaving at like 11 o'clock and then 2.33, you were still here? <laughs> oh, I honestly don't even know if he was going for that or if he was just trying to hit it. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, bud. All right, Russian leaves the 2-3. I'm not sure if the 3 is wired or not. It's going to probably bounce off the rail. Guys, if you can, like and share our stream out for us. Try to build our numbers. Chris, YouTube, <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube allows me to get to a broader audience, plus with going to YouTube, you can get monetized, and they allow you to broadcast in 4K versus the 1080 that Facebook throttles you at, and then I also pay a royalty for some music, which Facebook does not recognize that royalty, but YouTube does. Yes, Chris, I'm uh, using OBS, uh, OBS 29.1 to be exact.
He's going to strike first blood and make the score one nothing. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it, buddy. Of course, anytime if you're back in Philly, you know you're always welcome. Thank you. Uh, seven foot tables, Chris. Seven foot diamonds. I was at a couple people last night who messaged me and uh, asked me if there was a tip jar donation. I don't personally like to ask for tips, but they keep urging me to put it on the stream. If somebody feels inclined to tip, they are more than welcome. They do not have to, though. All right, Kenny gets out, makes the score 1-1. One, one. Guys, also, if you could like and share the stream, we have... Two of the best bar table players in America here right now playing. Rack three, rushing to break. Score tied 1-1. One, one. One and three stuff here. Can you push the ball? Stand the tables. We'll leave Mike shot. Looks like he's going to return safe there.
And looks like Kenny wasted his one play good for today on this rack. Wow. That's going to be balling in again. Two racks in a row. Mike's broke the rack, broke the ball's good. He's got no love off the break. I said like Ken's going to turn the rack over here. Is it just me or did I take a weird roll off the six? Yeah, I'm not sure, Chris. I uh, I thought maybe he would have hit it a little, a little tougher too. It's going to leave Mike an opportunity to get out and tie the score up at two-two. I said last rack, I think uh I think Kenny wasted his play better on that rack. I think he's gonna come around the table. We're gonna Two two Kenny and Soleil in a race to six. Chris, these two love to hate each other. Makes great competition. Sometimes, at least. <clears throat> I think collectively, both of them got about four hours of sleep. We were in the action room here until at least 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30.
Now it's gonna get you thick, buddy. <laughs> These guys are in the open bracket here at the Diamond Bar Box Classic. Post the link in the chat for everybody to follow along. We follow along with Digital Pool. Three, three brackets being played today. The low, the intermediate, and the open all at once. Yeah, Chris, there is some background music and some background noise, but I have the gate set to, uh, basically, I'm about, my, my mouth is about two inches away from the microphone right now. See what Mike does here. All right, I'm going to bring one of our uh, PA Pro-Am sponsored players here, Skylar Hess. She was just on the stream prior to this match. She played uh, Paul Schultz. She won that match 5-4. Skylar is 14-year-old sponsored player. She's sponsored by me. Brews and Cues, Mercedes Supply, Jam Up, Predator, Town Chalk, and the Dunsky Dungeon. So needless to say, she's a little 14-year-old ass kicker. <laughs> So, hi, Sky. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. How'd you play today? I feel like I played good, but I just got a few, unfortunately. You feel you played? The look on your face did not tell me that earlier. <laughs> you missed that one ball, that one ball and a kind of... Uh, I don't think it set the tone, but I think the one ball that you missed, I think it was the six ball that you missed, it... Uh, Gave him an opportunity to essentially miss a few times and get incredibly lucky with a couple of his misses. <laughs> now, you and him played some good saves back and forth, uh, but I've noticed a couple times you kicked at a ball and you hit it perfect, and then you just got unlucky and scratched. Yeah. How do you, uh, just you personally, how do you deal with something like that? How, what, what makes you uh, continue to stay in your zone and not get frustrated with that kind of, um, I guess, say, unluckiness? Uh, I just, the main thing about it is I just, um, focus on, like, I probably will get another shot. Maybe not that rack, but especially an alternate break, I always got to look at it. I can, I'll get another break or I'll get another shot. It might not be 
the best, but at least I'm at the table. So we have a question here in the commentary. Uh, want to know when did, uh, they want to know when did you start playing? Uh, I started playing when I was four, but then like competitively, I was I started playing when I was around eight or nine. Eight or nine years old. So, so about I like guess. Six years. So give us some background on yourself. Tell us how you essentially got started. When you started, where you started playing at. Well, um, my mom and dad had nobody to watch me at home, and so um, they used to have to take me to like the pool pool rooms and stuff. And when I'd go there, I'd sleep like under the pool tables on the chairs i wasn't ever able to play because i was too young but uh, that's how it started and then my grandparents had a pool table at their house and he my dad wanted me to pr start playing because i was really interested in it and i couldn't do it at the pool halls and my grandfather was like no 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 like um, I don't want the table messed up, but my dad finally convinced him to let me play on the table, and he built a platform around the table for me, and then after he built a platform around the table for me, I kind of just started playing and playing and playing, and then there's this, like, APA Junior League that I started playing in. I won, like, the Nash, the playoffs to go to Nationals, and then Nationals, in St. Louis was like my first big tournament ever. And then from that I did nationals, which was like BEF nationals. And I ended up winning one. I was the youngest player to ever win it in the 14U bracket. And I was 10 years old. So she so. was at 10 years old. She was a national champion. She's actually a two-time national champion. I just won uh, in 2021. In 2021. Or no, 2022. I lied. 2022. So we, uh, Skylar for her. I guess you call it calendar for 2024. We're looking to get Skylar into more of the uh, pro events, more of the uh, ladies events. We're definitely going to get her in a couple of WPBA events. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have the uh, around here. It's a pro am tour. It's the JP Newt, JP Shower Northeast Women's Tour, and we're going to get her in a couple of those. And there's been some rumblings about a local tournament director in Philadelphia who might be bringing match room to Philly. And we're definitely going to have her involved in that. And, of course, she'll be playing in the Pennsylvania Juniors Championship in December. Mm -hmm. So okay. who was your first sponsor? My first ever sponsor was Predator Cues. Predator Cues. That's, that pretty, that's pretty good for your first ever sponsor being you know, one of the largest pool, uh, <laughs> pool cue companies in the world. I was... Um, I was the second person to be picked up from the United States, junior-wise. Remember, folks, she's 14 years old. <laughs> I've most been of us, with them. Most of us get to where she is at 35, 40, 45. I've been with Predator for about five years, so. What's your current Predator cue that you play with? I play with the new True Splice, the Ebony one i'm pretty sure and then <laughs> i break with the the gold bk rush and i jump with the air rush with the wrap uh chris that uh, october's gonna be a little busy for me i got the nine ball uh open state championship on october 7th and i have the eight ball open state championship on october 21st and then the women's uh, eight ball championship on October twenty eighth. Um, I know Emily's going to be coming to the women's state championship next uh, next weekend at Bluegrass. Uh, we currently have ninety four women signed up for that event. Uh, Skyler has decided that we are not good enough for her to oh come to that gosh. event, and she's going to go to the JIC. That's not true. <laughs> the only reason why I'm playing in the JIC instead of the women's event is because... It's because you want to give the other women a chance to win. We know. <laughs> no, it's just because uh, this is my last year. Even though I'm 14, I was able to play uh, the 13U because my birthday was after January 1st. 
So that kind of gave me another year in the 13U. So this is my like last ever year to try to win the uh, national, like the champion title on a, for the whole season. And we're obviously just messing with Skylar. We've discussed what her plans are. We knew she was a, was not going to be playing in this actual event. We're going to miss her, but again, we're going to give the other ladies a chance to win. Uh, they want to know who your favorite player is, and have you had a chance to meet them or play them yet? Ma. So yes. Uh, I have a few different players, so I kind of break it up into categories. So, like, my favorite, uh, like, European players are, well, uh, she's Russian, but I like uh, the infamous couple, uh, Fedor and um, Christina. Christina. They're super nice people. I've met them before. I've talked to them. They're super nice, super kind. Um, And I just love, like, their fundamentals. Um, my favorite Filipino player, probably Dodong, James okay. Aranis. Yeah. Um, I met him in 2019 in Vegas. He was playing a big match. I don't remember against who, but it was at Griff's. And after his match, after he won, my, I was shy to go talk to him because he was one of my favorite players. And um, my mom was like, "No, no, no! I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you come up. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna take you up to him." So. He, she introduced me to uh, Roy from Roy's Basement. And after that, um, after I met Roy from Roy's Basement, I met Dodong, or James Aranis. And it was so funny because I was playing in my 2019 Nationals, the one that I won. But he, um, Roy looks at me, and he was talking. He's like, what are you playing in? And I told him, and he was like, well, if you don't win this event, you're going to have to come to my house because you live in Maryland and I live in Virginia. So you have to come to my house and you're going to have to cut the grass, but with scissors <laughs> if you don't win. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and he was like, and my yard is fairly he, big. He does have a very big yard. <laughs> so he said, you better not lose. And then I won and it kind of stuck with, with him and James because – do you have a favorite uh, player from Asia? Um, uh, probably female. I don't really like. Um, I don't have a favorite like male Asian player, but um, women. Bean Hung. I played her at the sledgehammer thing in Bristol, Tennessee. And I was, ta- it was single elimination because I made it to the single elimination round. And I played, was playing, like I was told that that was my draw. And I was like, are you serious? Like, of all the people I play, I'm playing like a seven something Fargo. 7.30, I think she's up to now, yeah. 7.32. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go in this match with my best intentions to win. I probably won't, but I'll try my hardest. And... Uh, I ended up losing 8-6. Um, Which is a very respectable score against somebody of that caliber. Uh, it was the whole match. It was like 1-1, one, 2-2. One, two, two. I got to the – I got 6-6. Six, six. She breaks and runs. And then um, I run down to this ball, but I can't make it, so I play safe. She jumps it, makes it, and runs out to win. So I was like, I can't be mad. I no, didn't make a mistake. All. She just shot really good. Well, I always believe that if you're going to become a better player, you either got to face the better players or learn from the better players. So I actually have a fantastic relationship with Bean Hung. Uh, she's been in a couple of my tournaments, and she's just a fantastic person. And I talked to Bean, and Bean is actually going to work with Skylar for about two or three days uh, next month. And she's going to just essentially get her just crazy battle ready for the future. And having someone like Bean who's going to spend just days just letting her absorb her knowledge is priceless. Yeah. And then last but not least, I can't forget my favorite U.S. player because that's kind of biased. <laughs> um, you can say. Good. Oh, um, my my favorite um U.S. player. Sorry, I kind of lost my mind for a minute. <laughs> um, my favorite U.S. player is either probably Skylar Woodward. Sky Woodward. Because uh, he was always one of my biggest fans. And um, he 
after I won in nationals. I met a lot of pros after yeah. nationals. I played with them before nationals because we went to the Rio. Okay. And then after that, uh, Deb Woodward, his mom, yeah, met Deb. was like, um, you guys should come to dinner with us. And we all went out to dinner in Las Vegas and went to the Fremont Street. And mm -hmm. it was super cool. So, so Mike Sully takes down that match six to three against Kenny Rutman. That's going to put him to the B side. I'm going to push Mike Sully on further into the matchup. Kenny's giving me a dirty look right now because he wasted his play better. 